Hello, Selena. How are you? Good morning, Sunshine. How are you? I am great. It's it's great for you to join me on a Thursday. And I would like to begin by playing for you. I left two cuts of the rule interview with Vice President Harris for you specifically. I want to know how these cuts are going to play in PA and all the other states that you visited, cut number 15. That, but there are people there that are stressed, that feel that they're at capacity. Communities around the country that have legal immigration, many have said, we're, we're, we're at capacity. And many feel like the government has said to them, well, adapt, sit down, be quiet. This is how it is. What would a Harris administration do for those communities who've taken in many, many legal immigrants but are at capacity? Well, first of all, we do have a broken immigration system, mm -hmm. and it needs to be fixed. And if we take a step back, months ago, some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress came together with others, proposed a border security bill. That would have put 1,500 new border agents on the border to help those hardworking border agents who are there right now working around the clock. Would have put more money into stemming the flow of fentanyl, which is killing Americans around our country and devastating communities. Would have put more resources into our ability to prosecute transnational criminal organizations, which in my career I've prosecuted. Donald Trump got word of the bill realized it was going to fix a problem he wanted to run on and told him to kill the bill, don't put it up for a vote. He killed a bill that would have actually been a solution because he wants to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And that's part of what needs to be addressed. And my pledge is that when elected president, if the American people will have me, I will bring that bill back and I will sign it into law. And we need a comprehensive plan. That includes what we need to do to fortify not only our border, but deal with the fact that we also need to create pathways for people to earn citizenship. All right, Selena Zito, how does Passways to Citizenship play in Pennsylvania right now? You know, it doesn't. There's there's so many problems with um, with that answer. And, and and I have to say on the top of my head, she's the one that killed the bill in 2018 that Trump had. So, you know, why is that never addressed? Um, and, and she's the one that's in charge right now. You know, executive orders could have done a lot of different things and she could have addressed it more forthrightly. And I think that people cannot get past that to that answer that she just gave. Does that make no, sense? Uh, number one, the answer isn't true. Jim Langford did the best deal he could do. He came back. There yeah. were two Republicans who supported it out of 49. And those right. two thought it was better than nothing, but it was never going to get through the House. So it's just an absolute illusion. But number two, the question was about stress communities. Haven't you been traveling right. with President Trump? Didn't he go to some of these stress communities? Are they talking about pathways to citizenship? No, they're talking about crime. They're talking about fentanyl overdoses. They're talking about stresses on the school districts, on the on the infrastructure, on the hospitals, on the social services. And, and, and there's no extra money to accommodate that, and as well as housing. And so, no, they're, they're not talking about pathways to citizenship. They're talking about Fix what's problem now. Fix what you've done to our community now. All right. I want to play for you the next cut uh, because it's it's a doozy. Cut number 16. Because your opponent almost every day seems to be talking about this. So I just want to ask you yes or no. Okay. At any point in your life, have you served two all beef patties, special sauce, <laughs> lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun, bun, working at a McDonald's? Yes or no? That's it. I have. Okay. Now the other job. Now and, the other job. But it was okay. not a small job. Like, I did okay. the fries. I mean, I, you know. Yes, okay, for a but small I did. period of time. But then let me ask about a big job. But, but, but to your point, if I'd you don't mind, before now, we get to the big job. This goes to the interview. I do not criticize former colleagues by name. I don't bring them up. I work with Stephanie for a long time. Uh, if you had been asking the question about McDonald's, would you have asked for a store and a date? Uh, well, uh, of course. I, right. If you if you did work at McDonald's, you would give a store, you would talk, oh, and I work with 
uh, Lisa and David, and we did this, and I was in high school or I was in college. You know, you brought the the, the listener, the viewer into the moment of of your employment there. There was no follow oh, uh, up. Yeah, and- Selena, let me expand on that. In 1973, I worked with Rob Gennari, Kim and Scott Phillips at Terrace North. At 1974, I walked at, worked at Waddell Pool with Dan Wilson. In 1975 and 76, I worked with Molly McGuire at the Pool at Terrace North. In 1977, I worked as the manager of the Packard Park School. I know every summer job I had. Nobody doesn't right. know. I can give you the address. Yes, that's exactly right. And everybody can answer that way. Everybody remembers those first couple of jobs, kind of like you goofed off sometimes, but it was also hard work. Not me. There were other oh, kids, I was good. There were other kids with you. Well, if you worked at the Canary school, goofed you off. Molly off. never showed up, but it wasn't me. <laughs> You know, everybody has that answer. There was no connectivity to her experience. So it still leaves it out in the air. All she said was, you know, I made the French fries. So why did uh, did why did Stephanie rule frame it that way? Oh, just to be cute and funny. I mean, it's not it's not I it. The question wasn't bad. It was the non-answer that was bad. It was not. It was the lack of follow-up that was bad, right? You ever like, see a kid that, in a bowling alley when they put the inflated things in the bump in the uh, the the aisles where you know the ball yeah. won't go in the gutter? That was yeah. what that was. Just a yes or no. Did you work at McDonald's? I'm not going to make you roll a ten strike. Just a yes or no. I just couldn't believe it. Couldn't it was believe painful. It. Uh, All right, let me go to the post-game show. All night, MSNBC is doing cleanup on aisle Stephanie. Here is cut number 17, (laughs) Stephanie with Chris Hayes. Cut number 17. One could watch that and say, well, she didn't give a clear, direct answer. That's okay, because we are not talking about clear or direct issues. Cut number 18, Stephanie rule with Nicole Wallace. I do, but here's what's a little tricky. She doesn't answer the question around... If the GOP is controlling the Senate, if she can't raise corporate taxes, where is she going to get the money from, you know, to expand the child tax credit and do all the things she wants to do? And she says, we just have to do it. And that's great. And that's a campaign promise. But 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 the issue is, if it means we're just going to borrow again, then what we're doing is we're just never. Uh, All right, blah, blah, blah. She didn't answer the question. Uh, What do you make of this whole thing, Selena Zito? Well, first of all, our problems are very serious. And you should answer those questions. Not only have we been dealing with inflation, inflation that has not gone, the prices have never gone down. I don't, I don't know how many times I need to say that. Even to, you know, Pete Buttigieg yesterday, well, inflation's gone down. The costs are, you know, better. No, they're not. Go shopping. Go food shopping. Uh, and, you know, these are, these are big problems. And, and our problem is also a pending problem with our job market. You know, there are some serious holes in our job market and and everyone, the, you know, the Democrats are completely ignoring that, pretending it's not it's non-existent. And it's it's going to rear its ugly head incredibly soon. I, Last I, I question, Selena. You've been with the former president. How are the crowds the same? Is the enthusiasm the same? Do you sense that he is the same after the assassination attempts? Yeah, absolutely. He's, um, I was with him all day Monday. Uh, and, you know, it was really interesting, the sort of a tale of two completely different campaigns in Western Pennsylvania. He drove through 120 miles of Western P- Pennsylvania. People were lined up in front of farms, small towns, um, uh, suburbs, out in front of their houses, in front of their neighborhoods. And, and a couple of people were on a tractor. Even some had a terrible towel. I know how much that would make you happy, um, Hugh Hewitt. But, um, but that's the kind of, of engagement. You know, he was in a grocery store. I'm standing there, and he gives this mom a hundred bucks to, to uh, with three rambunctious little boys um, to to help pay for the groceries. And so that that's the he's he's hitting with the issues that people care about where they're at 
visibly. Selena Zito, and always good to check in with you. Can't wait to read that report. Follow her at selenazito.com or follow her on X at Zito Selena.